Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to CAC TV this day as we do a special coverage of the Machakos senatorial by-election. And on this day, we also have our guests in studio who are helping us to look into the state of Kenyan politics. Uh, this afternoon, we are joined by Mr. Philip Mwangale, who is a leadership and a governance consultant, flanked by Mr. Frederick Sassia, who is a policy and a political analyst. We keep on looking and keeping our tabs on this by-election because it gives us a picture of what indeed it means to have an election in Kenya. And as our previous guests agreed here, is that election is not an event but a process. And that's why we look at events surrounding this election and probably suggest issues that can actually uh, improve the next year's general election. Mr. Philip and Mr. Sasha, welcome one more time to CAC TV. It's been a while, I think, for you it's been almost a year since uh, when we are doing the 10th, 10th anniversary sure, sure, of sure. the new constitution. Yeah. Philip was here just the other month. Mm. And uh, before we get into business, uh, today is a black day in East Africa because uh, one of the countries, this is Tanzania, has lost its uh, her head of state, that is John Pombe Magufuli. And uh, I'll give you an opportunity, I'll give also a brief opportunity to say a word to the people of Tanzania and even to some of the Kenyans who admired Magufuli and probably even those ones who did not admire him and probably send your messages of condolences. Thank you, thank you for having us. Um, first, I would want to, um, I would want to say Makiwa to the people of Tanzania and my heart goes out to them. Uh, our condolences to uh, the good people of Tanzania and the whole of the African continent because uh, Magufuli was such a key figure on the Pan-African front and we've not just lost a president, I think we have lost uh, a leader who stood for Pan-African values. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a man of his, his own uh, deficiencies like uh, uh, you know many of us and all of us uh, really, uh, but he was a leader in my view uh, that Tanzania needed uh, at, at this time. So it, it's a great loss not just for Tanzanians but for the East African community and for the continent at large. Um, uh, uh, the, the VP and uh, who will now, who is now the incoming uh, president of uh, the Republic of Tanzania, uh, Honorable Samia Suluhu, uh, is, is a strong is a strong woman, and uh, my prayer is that uh, she continues in the footsteps of uh, uh, the late uh, President Magufuli, and that uh, she galvanizes a support base that will help her uh, push Tanzania to even greater heights than uh, Magufuli had positioned uh, it. Uh, in, in, in the last uh, couple of years. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Philip, and also Mr. Sassia, just to have a word also over the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you first for hosting us. And I would like to say, just like my friend has said, mm -hmm. that uh, the message I have for the people of Tanzania is Pole. We've lost a great man, arguably one of the best presidents in Africa and the best president in East Africa. Mm -hmm. Some of us would want to allude to his weaknesses, but that is not how we want to judge Magfuli. Magfuli has done so much great. He's a man who had the zeal to fight corruption. He's <clears throat> the man who praised his public servants in terms of performance and output. And we know him <clears throat> for not tolerating all public servants who are not performing. So he's a man when even in his death, we are going to remember him and we are actually going to use him as a benchmark for East Africa. And East African leaders would really want to copy Magufuli and be people who can lead by good example and speak not only through speeches, but also do the same in deeds. Magufuli has been known <clears throat> to suck his public servants who are not performing. That is something that you find so rare in Africa and especially in, in, in East Africa where once you are found maybe like corrupting government money, then you become so fame. So Magufuli has set a good platform for everyone to copy. And his death has come with a, a new start for, for Tanzania and Africa and especially East Africa mm -hmm. because you are going to have the first 
uh, president, the first woman president in the region. And this is now going to set a clear path for women leadership in East Africa that whatever she's going to do, the performance will be now a path for any other woman in Kenya, in Uganda, in East Africa and Africa at large to copy and move ahead and lead because we believe they're capable. But uh, one thing I would want to, to also say about Magufuli because his death comes as a lesson. Most people would want to speculate what, what has killed him, but we are not really sure and we, we are not doctors to say what has killed him. But this should come as a lesson to Africans that uh, whenever there is a situation like the one we are in, appreciate the processes, appreciate the professionals. When they guide, follow the guidelines, irrespective of how bad or ridiculous they look, but it is okay. Fall on there, let lead your people in the right track so that we can have a safe environment. But generally, I admire Magufuli. Many thanks, yes. gentlemen. We cross over to Machapo's county where our reporter Chris Samu has been there since morning and uh, the crew just to enable us to uh, get the information. My director is telling me that uh, things are not yet ready. Now we come back to the political scene, Mr. Philip and uh, Mr. Sasia. Few hours ago, the head of state appointed uh, Kembe Gitura as the chairman of the Communication Authority of Kenya. And remember, Kembe Gitura has been mentioned highly, his role in the Kemsa scandal that uh, you remember the millionaires and the billionaires that uh, actually has caused a lot of outcry to the people that within a pandemic, people are dying, people are, are losing jobs, someone else is stealing. And it's raising a lot of questions that are uh, where are we getting to from a policy perspective, from a legal perspective. Is the president really in a better capacity or there is someone who is not telling the president the truth? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's uh, about the president being advised um, or being given direction. I think this uh, just stops at, at his doorstep. Uh, it is John Maxwell who says that everything rises and falls with leadership. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about leadership in this case, we are not talking about uh, anyone else behind the president. It's good to have people advising you and, uh, and giving you counsel, but uh, he has the capacity. He's, mm -hmm. he's making those decisions at his own behest mm -hmm. and not at, at the direction of any other person. Mm -hmm. But it is unfortunate and it saddens me that um, individuals um, who in other working democracies would have resigned just by the mere fact that uh, some accusations have been leveled against them mm -hmm. uh, are given plum positions in this country. Uh, it, it is not uh, new that uh, you know we are having such a scenario happening. Uh, uh, Kembi Gitura's um, uh, appointment uh, and his his my senior in the profession um, is is not coming as as a surprise. I mean, we've had people uh, over time, people who have uh, superintended over corruption, people who have turned uh, you know the other way when people were looting in either in parastatals, in their ministries or institutions uh, in which they were tasked uh, to provide leadership. Those individuals have been rewarded uh, by being given uh, plan positions. And that goes to show you something, that corruption pays in this country. It unfortunately uh, it is, but it is, it is our reality that corruption pays. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have individuals uh, who are in certain positions where they ought to have stopped crime from happening, mm -hmm. being rewarded uh, with political positions, then it goes to show you that even the appointing authority, mm -hmm. and I would dare say this, that the appointing authority, uh, you know. Um, tolerates such things, mm -hmm. if not participates in those very crimes. Mm -hmm. That one how puts uh, an innocent person like Sasia, mm -hmm. a good man, uh, a man who wants to do what is right. Uh, Philip has just mentioned the part of appointments, but another worst part is when it comes to elections. The chances of a thief with evidence being elected are so high than an innocent man like my brother Asasia. So in as much as my brother Philip has talked of uh, the leadership, indeed it's true, it begins and falls with the leadership. But again now, our role as citizens, why do we embrace the thieves and uh, the worst of the society? Is it the values that uh, we hold so dear to us or is there any solution to this? You see, the moment, the moment you bring in the citizens, then you remember that uh, 
most people in Kenya are just but voting robots. Mm -hmm. They really do not uh, interrogate who they are going to vote. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we tend to vote people, people based on how much we know them, how famous they are. And in this country, if you want to become famous and get a good job in this country, then get yourself not involved in anything else except corruption. Mm -hmm. If today, like for example, you want to come out of this place and the president gets to know who you are, ensure your name is mentioned in the certain mega corruption. And you know, it is a very unfortunate situation because every now and then in every public uh, in every public address, the president will keep telling us that uh, we need we need to fight corruption, that corruption is ailing our country. He will put some good words and good statements, but just after his speech, he goes ahead and now awards a man or rather people who have stolen from our country. You see, this country, I've kept saying that we are not a poor country. We are very urban rich, a rich country, but one thing we need to stop and fight with all the forces and everything is corruption. Mm -hmm. Because almost half of our budget goes to corruption. Half our development budget, in fact three quarters, goes to corruption. Mm -hmm. So Kenyan taxes are actually allocated to corruption more than it is allocated to what it's supposed to do. And We're if, briefly uh, coming into that, yeah. let's uh, move straight to Machakos County where our reporter Chris Sambu is in the field and uh, is going to tell us what is going to happen there. Chris Sambu, good afternoon, my brother. Good afternoon, Cornelius. Uh, I trust you're doing well in, uh, in studio, back in studio. I hope you are also doing well. We are well here with Mr. Philip and also Mr. Sasia. Yes. But again, we are interested actually to know where you are at the moment and uh, probably how is the situation on the ground has the situation improved uh, just from how the Machakos governor and other aspirants and even yourself uh, had indicated earlier that the voting turnout is so low? How is the situation? How is the security? What are the people saying? Just to bring up to you up to speed on what is happening right here at uh, this particular hour, you understand it's uh, around uh, two hours before the closing of the polling station right here in Machakos County. And uh, since morning, we have witnessed a low turnout, which is uh, a situation that has not changed in the better part of the afternoon. Uh, many expectations from the voters, including contestant, the Wiper Party contestant, that is uh, Anne Kavindu, Agnes Kavindu, I mean, she voted earlier on and indicated that that in the afternoon a lot of people will be showing up to vote but until now there is no any change uh, or rather any situation or change from the morning scenarios that we witnessed low voter turnout again uh, machakos governor dr alfred motua indicating that uh, uh, the by elections have been having been put uh, in the middle of the week while people are still working there is a lot that is uh, actually happening in the villages and even in the in the town center so therefore there, there has been a low turnout in general uh, right here we had uh, alfred motua even agnes convened to talk of uh, malpractices such as a voter bribery that had go uh, going on in some different areas but we have not yet identified or heard from the police uh, about the voter bribery and uh, apart from that there is also another scenario where uh, the, 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 list, the name of uh, John Mutua Katuku already on the ballot paper and uh, as we spoke to many of the voters right here in Machakos County, most of them expressing their dissatisfaction with the uh, pullout of uh, Mutua Katuku. Again, others still went ahead and even voted for him and now that puts a question on what really will transpire if in any case John Mutua Katuku is voted by the majority of the residents here having pulled out but uh, with his name still on the voting papers so if he emerges a winner what happens and that is a question that we posed to dr alfred mutua but he had no idea and uh, he didn't even want to talk about that and uh, as of now we are headed uh, to kathiani polling station where there is the, it, it is also the place where the telling center of kathiani constituency that will be happening at that particular point and later on we will be also camping at the machakos academy where the, the, that is the main Telling center from all const from all eight constituencies, Cornelia Somose. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sambu. And maybe to ask one more time, apart from Anne Kavindu and uh, Alfred Mutua have just spoken, have you had an opportunity maybe to know where other candidates are? That is uh, Ngengele and other candidates. 
and probably also still on Alfred Mutua from his speech some things were not coming out clearly and uh, from those who could read his body language they talked of a man who was actually not himself at that time he was a bit bitter what what was he like moving around and uh, whom is he supporting us at now uh, actually, I understand that uh, Albana Singengele of the UDA party that is affiliated to the Deputy President William Bruto and that is also having the support of former Machako Senator Johnston Mothama, he voted at his home in Mwala, that is where he casted his vote uh, uh, early in the morning at around 10 while Agnes Kavind was casting his, at, uh, his registration polling station right here in Machako's constituency and again yeah, there, there, there are different eight different contestants, some of them being independent, and uh, we understand they voted at these places. But according to Dr. Alfred Mutua, it says that the Mind Leo Church of Park is not in full support of Wiper Party. And now we pose the question on him on why if Mind Leo Church pulled out of the election in favor of the handshake or rather the BBI uh, to proponents, that is President Uruki and Raila Odinga and Kalonzo being part of them, he declined the position of um, of the Leo Chapter being in support of Ann Kavindu and indicated that he did not take side for Ann Kavindu of WIPA but did that for the goodwill of the people of Machakos and to avoid the scenarios of uh, the scenarios of violence witness now that uh, the, cont the contestant of uh, Ann Agnes Kavindu and even John Mutua Katuku is what was proven to be a competition right in Machakos County. But Mutua Katuku pulling according to F Mutua was a way of easing the temperatures here, the political temperatures here, and even making sure that there is no violence witness, which again Mutua uh, could be right because so far we haven't had any form of violence or even uh, any fights that have been witnessed in polling stations. So according to what Dr. Mutua said, the withdrawal of the candidate from this particular by-election was a tactical and tremendous move that they are expecting it will give back to them in 2022. And again, he, he put an insight where he said that uh, they did a long discussion with the leader Raila Odinga and President Uru Kenyatta before they decided to pull out in the last minute. And this now begs the question of yet another political alliance between the, the, the ODM leader Raila Odinga, um, Chapo's governor, Dr. Alfred Mutua of the Mind Leo Church and President Uru Kenyatta indicating that there is a pact deal in between them that led to them with the drawing from this particular by-election. And that is what has been happening here. And though the satisfaction from the supporters of Mind Leo Church, Governor Alfred Mutua still says there is much to gain from the withdrawal of John Mutua Katupo from now, uh, Mr. Sambu, at what time are we expecting uh, the closure of these uh, voting exercises before the IBC now commences the exercise of counting and tiling of votes? At around 5 p.m., all polling stations will be closed uh, right in Machakos from the eight constituencies and even from the ward levels. By 5 p.m., the polling stations are expected to be closing. And uh, But uh, there is this uh, there is this right where if you will be in the queue while the 5 p.m. gets, when the time gets to 5 p.m., you will be able to vote. But some of the voters in Machakos say if they will not have voted by 4 p.m., then they don't see the need of voting. So by 5 p.m., I must say, the polling stations will be closed and now we'll be heading to the constituency tiling centers where there are different, there, there are different tiling centers from constituencies. Like right now where we are at Kadiani, the tiling, main tiling of the constituency will be conducted at Kadiani Boys and again in Machakos Town constituency. We will be also at uh, Machakos University where that is the tiling center of Machakos Town constituency and it is a situation that will be duplicating all the eight constituencies right here in Machakos County and then eventually we will be heading to Machakos Academy where the now main tiling from all constituencies will be done from there. So right now we are just uh, waiting to see what will be happening by the time of the top of the hour. That is 5 p.m. Some of the voters here are just saying we will be voting at the last two minutes. So for us it's a matter of wait and see whether the situation will be by the time it gets to 5 p.m. or rather the situation will remain the same and uh, the lower voter turnout. And now that begs the question, having known that Machakos has over 600 voters, and up to now, not even a 50% has shown up for voting. 
Many thanks, uh, brother Chris Sambu. We will surely be keeping in touch with you just to know what is happening in Machakos uh, County as we continue here in studio discussing and breaking down some of those uh, happenings. All the best as you continue to keep us informed here in studio. All right, we'll be bringing live events of what will be happening from different constituencies and even the main talent centers. Many thanks, brother. Keep it up. Now, uh, gentlemen, there is another elephant in the room from Machakos County. Mutua uh, Katuku of Maendeleo Chapter, few days or few hours before the voting exercise began, they came out and talked of, we have withdrawn from the rest. And then a few hours later, uh, in the morning, uh, while Mutua was addressing the press, he talked of, when journalists were trying to ask him first, have you informed the IBC of that decision? He didn't answer that. Secondly, what led you to like make a decision of withdrawing from the rest? He talked of, of uh, to ease the temperatures like he had seen walls could erupt and all those things. Now, here comes a situation, especially with the low turnout, uh, Mr. Mwangale. There is a feeling that who knows, Mutua Katuku may end up becoming or being elected. What does the law talk about such a case where IBC was not notified, but you notify the citizens that have withdrawn from the rest, and then you match the winner in the ballot, because his name is there? Uh, first, um, you know, such um, a withdrawal, if not communicated to the IBC, is, it's, it's formally not a withdrawal. Uh, it just means that uh, you have chickened out of the rest <laughs> informally. And uh, that, that is what it was. Um, the other bit that I also suspect uh, 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 happened in this case is money changed hands. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we uh, underrate the value of money in our political uh, uh, landscape. Uh, because when um, um, Mutua comes out and says, uh, you know, our candidate would have won, we were just, uh, you know, taking care of the <laughs> political <laughs> health of, 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 uh, of the county. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is a lie. Uh, he's not being honest with himself first and with the people of Machakos and uh, the country at large. Because uh, if you know you are going to win uh, at, at this late stage, you, you'll not withdraw. I mean, you carry forward and, and make sure that you are um, uh, pursuing peace even in that process. I think we should get to a point where uh, we levy uh, certain uh, charges and penalties on individuals who play political chess with our election processes. Because for me, this, this is a uh, political chess. Mm -hmm. You are nearing uh, uh, an election on the eve of an election, really, and you, you communicate your withdrawal informally. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not even notify the IBC. In, in any case, if the IBC was, was, uh, was uh, notified, there's nothing much that would have been done because ballot papers have been printed. Uh, now, Mutua Katuku is on, on, on the ballot paper. That presents logistical challenges. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that again interferes with uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the voice of the people uh, on the ground because an individual who did not know that Mutua Katuku has, has withdrawn will go to the ballot uh, knowing that they are going to vote in Mutua Katuku. Uh, so that complicates uh, the dynamics within, within the county. Um, the other bit, I, I don't think that uh, he, he would win, uh, <laughs> the, the voter turnout notwithstanding, mm -hmm. he will get some votes. Uh, uh, after the after this process is, is done, uh, but the person who suffers is the person in uh, in Machakos, uh, because then you have messed up with uh, you know uh, the voice that comes out of uh, Machakos, because this is what uh, will happen, and uh, this is what uh, uh, the intention of the withdrawal was, that you are scattering uh, uh, and confusing any votes that would have gone to Abanas uh, Ngengele, uh, because uh, it appears that uh, you know every. Uh, machinery is marshaled against UDA mm -hmm. and the person of William Ruto. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a contest uh, between uh, or amongst the 11 candidates in Machakos. Mm -hmm. It is a contest between individuals who do not even reside in Machakos, who have no interest in Machakos aside mm -hmm. from the fact that you know they have a political following. Mm -hmm. That is unfortunate for me mm -hmm. and we have seen that uh, not just in Machakos but in the by-elections that have, have, have gone past. We saw that in Kamchai, mm -hmm. we saw that in Matungu and in the other wards that uh, have had by-elections. Mm -hmm. So if we continue in that manner, mm -hmm. we will not really be having by-elections in these units. Uh, we will be having political statements that uh, you know influence the national political stage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Mr. Philip has given us a, a very clear view of uh, 
what the law talks on such a situation that the IBC has not been notified that so and so has chickened out of the rest. Is that the right yeah, language? Yeah, that, that chickened true. out of the rest. Now, Mr. Sasia, if you are able to see the body language of Alfred Mutua in the morning, it wasn't a pleasant one. In fact, to a point that even journalists could not get some information from him because he was talking of. Uh, yeah, he talked of arrogance of why party, I don't know, we were boxed into a corner, those things. But the other day he was talking of we have agreed as leaders. From where you sit, do you think uh, it is uh, money, as it's been said, or it's this issue of um, interest, as he has just talked of uh, peace for the people of Machakos? What exactly do you think could have come in between here? You know, uh, before I comment on that, I would like maybe to say we have come at a point where we need to legislate. At what level or what time can I withdraw from an election and an election that I had already shown interest? Mm -hmm. Because we keep IBC at a very precarious uh, situation whereby they've already printed the ballot papers. They already know we have 11 candidates. Then one week to election, I withdraw. And there is no any legal implication that comes with that. Maybe I could support the idea with my friend that we are supposed to levy <clears throat> on these people who withdraw after the election body has spent some money in preparing for the election. But then having said that, uh, Governor Mtua is a man who is known to be a very nice communication expert who knows how to play PR. Because Governor Mtua was, was actually kidding with the people of Machakos and the election body by saying that he had withdrawn, withdrawn his candidate from the race. But then any serious person who was withdrawing his candidate from the race would have notified the IBC and a statement that is very much uh, making sense would have been given. But what Mtua did was just to play with the people's mind. Then on the eve or the other the day, the day of the election, he comes and gives a statement that shows otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because if you come and now start blaming Wiper Party, yet in the first statement he said, he was actually giving respect to the president and uh, the former prime minister after they agreed that it is not fair to put the people of Machakos in a very a very heated situation for the uh, by election so that was a statement that somehow seemed to be fair enough when you comp when when you go to the party election in the country because you understand governor mtua wiper leader kalonzo msioka railo Odinga, the president they both support uh, the bbi mm -hmm. and uh, all other all all the the latest uh, the latest by election we had it has not really been about that region but about the national politics mm -hmm. we've had uda who is trying now to test the, the the depth of the river and we've had this bbi team that really wants to use these by elections to stamp the authority and show that we are still a team that can win and that's why you've seen all the by elections have come with a lot of violence maybe except for machaco that we've, we've seen less but this has been so emotive because it is not about the by-election. It is about the national politics. But again, if I have to give my view on who I think out of the 11 candidates has to win, maybe I would say this. UDA had a chance to win, but they lost the election the moment they failed to, to put the name of Governor, uh, Senator Mudama on that list. But again, you remember, Kalonzo played it the Kenyan way. The moment he realized that Mdama was having a chance of competing or going for the, for the by-election, he went and uh, took the former wife and now put her as the wiper uh, candidate. And you see that put Mudama in a very difficult situation. He could not even go out and campaign. At one point we realized he was so much emotive in a funeral that he stood and even wanted to go physical with uh, the wiper leader Kalonzo. Mm -hmm. So the Machakos uh, by-election is between uh, two two people. That is uh, Honorable Kengele and uh, and Madam and Honorable Kavindu, but uh, Kavindu poses a high chance because uh, you know if you analyze the entire Machakos, you realize that we have uh, we have Mavoko Mavoko constituency, which has the highest voters, which is around 118. Then we have Machakos uh, town that has around one one ten thousand voters, and uh, having a lower turnout 
we expect that the two, the vote that will come from the two regions, which, are, which again are controlled with Waipa and Mandalo Chap Chap. Now this makes it even difficult because Mandalo Chap Chap made a statement that they are pulling out, but they did not give a clear direction to their supporters. Who are you going to vote for? So I really expect the same way Mwangala said that we are going to see the Mandalo Chap Chap candidate receive some votes. But that will not really, that has really interfered with the voter turnout because there are people who really thought they would vote for him who will not now come to vote. Mm -hmm. So that election is going to be won with Waipa, but not in a very good way because mm -hmm. I insist on the point that we need to legislate mm -hmm. on when and at what point is am I going to withdraw from an election that IBIS has already spent. If I have to withdraw then, I have to cater for partly the cost of printing the ballot papers because I made them undergo a course that I'm not even participating in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Now, Mr. Mwangale, mm -hmm. this issue of uh, the quality of our legislation, I was reading an article very early in the morning, someone was crying in the social media, mm -hmm. talking of the type of people who are in those two houses, especially the National Assembly, the Senate, at least has a good number of lawyers, you will find the former G and other bigwigs there at least who have uh, knowledge on how some of these things are done. Yes. But someone was really questioning the quality of our legislation. Mm. And uh, from where you sit, you are the people who make these laws. <clears throat> what, where did the rain start beating us when it comes to the quality of legislation? Because someone could have seen it somewhere mm. once, Twice, I have a withdraw from the election, two days to the election. Mugina na withdraw as go you know, leaflets as a pita pita maliaji, sasya mejitoa. Where did the rain start beating us when it comes to quality of legislation, foresight, foreseeing a trouble, then you run there and come up with a bill which finally becomes to become a law? Um, when you have um, sectarian interests in forming uh, the work of parliament, you would hardly come up with anything good. Mm -hmm. And now when you're talking about legislation, most of the time uh, acts of parliament um, and regulations that are supposed to support certain uh, strong uh, provisions of the constitution of Kenya, and especially now the constitution of Kenya 2010, uh, when they are being uh, put together, uh, you, when those sectarian interests now uh, flow into that process, you find acts of parliament that are watered down. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the Elections Act, when you're talking about the Political Parties Act, uh, and uh, I will tie that to the Leadership and Integrity Act, those are acts that were really watered down. If they were to maintain the spirit of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, mm -hmm. then we will not have people playing around uh, you know, with the psychology of Kenyans, because that is really what they are doing. Um, one, there's, there's a provision in uh, the Elections Act that um, mandates uh, candidates and political uh, actors uh, within the election process uh, to ensure that uh, aside from maintaining peace, they are not uh, coercing, bribing or influencing uh, candidates to withdraw from, uh, from whatever race, uh, whether they are giving it uh, for consideration or not. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what has happened uh, with Mutua Katuku, uh, and, and you hear the sentiments of uh, Alfred Mutua, you'd, you'd get to a conclusion that uh, there, there could have been coercion. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from money changing hands, there could have been coercion mm -hmm. because he appears to lay the blame at uh, Kalonzo Msioka's uh, feet yeah. that, uh, you know, they were twisted mm -hmm. uh, in, into uh, dropping out of the rest, which they have not really done. Mm -hmm. um, when you have such things happening in a country that uh, is operated uh, by the rule of law, and in a country that is over legislated like ours is because I am of the opinion that we have too many laws in this country. Mm -hmm. It's only that we are not intent on implementing those laws. Mm -hmm. And th there's a way the IBC could maneuver within what we have. In as much as those um, uh, acts of parliament are watered down, there is a way. If if I, I, I can see uh, you know uh, a, a maneuver a maneuverability uh, in, mm -hmm. in those laws, then the IBC should mm -hmm. because we are paying them to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a laxity in our institutions. Uh, there's also a, a laxity in, in Parliament. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, I fault Parliament with is the fact that we have people who largely uh, do not have the capacity to be legislators. Mm -hmm. uh, take an example of uh, what has been happening in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. 
uh, members of parliament are busy running up, up and down the country, drumming up support for whoever they are supporting or whatever cause they are championing. Mm -hmm. But the work of legislation is really uh, uh, on the back bench. Uh, it, it has been relegated uh, to something that they do once in a while. So uh, legislation has turned out to be a part-time job or something that uh, to talk it machinani. Exactly, it's good that you mentioned part-time. The mm -hmm. other bit that I will also mention is that the people who actually do the legislation mm -hmm. uh, are not members of parliament. You have other other people behind uh, mm -hmm. the scenes doing the legislation. Mm -hmm. You have um, you know private members' bills that are funded from without parliament. Mm -hmm. So if you have people who do not have a philosophy, uh, you, they do not have a moral standing, mm -hmm. you cannot tell where they lie. Uh, when a legislation is coming up, uh, you have no way of telling uh, whether they are moral uh, standing informed that legislation, mm -hmm. whether they are philosophy, be it legal, be it uh, 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 you know economic, uh, fiscal or otherwise informed that legislation. Mm -hmm. So we have people who can be swayed by anything including mm -hmm. money and that is unfortunate. Now, Wakili, on this issue of the private members bill, I'm so glad you have brought it up, though it's a topic for tonight, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a good relay ground on these uh, also Mr. Sasia. And uh, before I come to you, I wish to ask Mr. Sasia, when did you ever sit down and said, let me come up with a thought as a private member, I want to come up with a bill and see how I can proceed with it. Have you ever thought of something about that? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently I was actually thinking about bringing a bill that would speak about water issues in parliament. Mm -hmm. And I was even mobilizing my members who I lead in the water sector and telling them that we need also to legislate for ourselves because if you leave for the politicians to legislate then you don't get the good that we need. But again you realize uh, no one has ever guided Kenyans on how if you want to, to bring a private bill to parliament, mm -hmm. what process you use. We've also put a lot of a lot of hurdles that a common Mwanainchu wants to bring a bill to parliament and maybe mm -hmm. force it through to the floor of the house doesn't even understand where to start from. And uh, and uh, that is the challenge even we had. We are asking that like yes, we have the idea we can actually come up with a bill, uh, including even uh, making it even better out of consultations. But then how do we get the bill? to the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. Then you remember that there have been allegations that our parliament you have bribed for them to now discuss a deal and for the bill to go through you have to bribe them. Then you realize like private bills cannot go through parliament unless they are coming from private citizens so again who have a greater influence in this country. Mm -hmm. Otherwise a common one like me and yourself or mm -hmm. any other person mm -hmm. cannot really come up with a good idea and bring it to parliament it is, it is discussed. Mm -hmm. But having said that, uh, I want to, to, to comment on something that the other question you asked Philip. And I was, I was just thinking, you know, when you have a fool in leadership, then Definitely you'll understand that the people who elected the leader are well represented. Mm -hmm. So every now and then we keep complaining of how uh, unable our leaders or parliaments are, how unable that we've put people in parliament who really do not legislate but concentrate on concentrate in politics. Mm -hmm. But come on, come think of it. Who elects these people? It is you and me. So definitely that means we took the best amongst us. Mm -hmm. So we are well represented. If you have to blame anyone, <laughs> uh -huh. then you have to blame the voter. Because how do we really think that we do not need to elect leaders, but we elect politicians? You know, that has been something that is really affecting this country. Another thing is, uh, when we have our constitution, our laws, mm -hmm. We've decided that uh, we put the predator to be the one legislating for the prey. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to expect that the prey will be disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. So we've put our politicians to legislate. Again, we've put them to be the people who want to oversee the implementation. Mm -hmm. These people definitely do things that will bend on their side. And that's why you've seen, like, for example, the, 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 the Leadership Act, the Election Act, has never been implemented because most of those parts of those, uh, the legislation really touches a lot on politicians, but we, really, we still expect them to, to, to foresee the implementation. Same to corruption. Mm -hmm. Who are the most corrupt people in this country? It is politicians. Mm -hmm. Then we put the mantle on them that they are people to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. How then would you fight yourself? Mm -hmm. In the common uh, human sense, 
you cannot really put yourself into trouble. You have to find a way to sneak out. So Thank we you. put our politicians to be those who are fighting and they will always find a way to sneak out and that way is let us not implement, let us change that so it looks like it, is fa it favors us. Mm -hmm. And that is the situation that we put our country in. Unless we change our voting patterns, unless we find the people who are the best in the society, unless we interrogate who do we want to represent us, then we should just stop complaining and sit back and enjoy what we've actually brought for ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Philip and Mr. Sasia, there's something that happened in the course of this week about uh, the government spokesperson, this is uh, Oguna, mm -hmm. when he was giving his comment after Yom, after Eli Pandishwa, Makelele Akanza, then he talked of something, he talked of, compared to Europe, we are not mm. are so much being taxed like them. Mm. And uh, he talked of government is not doing business, whatever they are doing is because they have to pay salaries, they have to ensure that uh, development projects are actually, are actually being implemented, and there are other issues that the government has to work upon. Now this thing seems not to have gone down well with the citizens, although there are those ones who are saying, Oguna was communicating what he was told to communicate. Do you really believe or do you agree with uh, Oguna's comments that uh, when it gets tough, when the government does it, it's because of the common good of Kenyans? First, I, I sympathize with um, the likes of uh, Colonel Oguna, uh, Eric Iraide, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Charles Owino, mm -hmm. uh, the police spokesperson, people who speak on behalf of institutions. Mm -hmm. And they have to say things that sometimes they themselves do not believe in. Um, and, and for the position of, uh, of government spokesperson, I think we, we, we saw quite a lot about uh, what that position entails when uh, Mutua was, was in, that, in that office. Uh, you know, you speak um, about things uh, that if, if somebody turned to you after you have already spoken them, uh, you are really ashamed of yourself. Um, but what uh, uh, Colonel Laguna mentioned, uh, he was not just speaking on behalf of somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those were sentiments that you could tell, mm -hmm. he, you know, he believes. Mm -hmm. You could tell by the body language, by the intonation, and, and, and by the tone, that mm -hmm. uh, that is what he believed. Mm -hmm. uh, before the French Revolution, um, uh, the, there were tough times uh, in, in, in France at that time. And uh, there was a princess called Maria Antoinette. Uh, she was um, a fiancée to the king then. And people were complaining about uh, you know the tough times. And uh, you know bread is is uh, old, almost the mainstay of, of 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 the French. And so they were saying there is no bread. And so these complaints reached uh, Maria Antoinette um, uh, because she was uh, likened to the queen. And um, she was surprised. Uh, she she asked uh, why are people complaining about uh, a lack of bread. Uh, why can't they eat cake? Let them eat cake. And that is the attitude that we are seeing from government, that uh, uncompassionate tone mm -hmm. that we are seeing. We are in tough times. I mean, the whole world has seen tough times. Mm -hmm. But because of our, our uh, fiscal policy, uh, because of the way we manage our economy, we are even seeing tougher times as a country. And for a government to take such a stand and uh, you know, tell uh, the citizens, uh, you, you know, you, you do not know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, people el elsewhere are suffering. Mm -hmm. When he likens us to Europe, uh, Europe does not have as much corruption as we do. Europe does not have uh, as, as clueless uh, uh, leaders as, as, as we have in office. Mm -hmm. Europe does not, uh, you know, have poor service delivery uh, like we do. Europe does not have chronic misappropriation and uh, misprioritization of resources. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we cannot compare ourselves to Europe. They are paying taxes that work for them. They enjoy some, some free services that uh, in, in our case we pay an, an, an arm and a leg for. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, we cannot make that comparison. What the government should be coming out to do is not to employ that kind of arrogance. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be telling us what they can do to alleviate uh, the suffering of Manaichi. Mm -hmm. uh, anything uh, short of that mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, uh, laughing at our faces. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Philip. Uh, our director is just informing us that uh, time is almost catching up with us. I'll come back to you for a brief uh, parting shot. But there's something I want you to touch on as we come to the end of this discussion about the Harambees. The other day you saw a bus that was in the social media that uh, mm. the DP went to do a contribution, then the bus was recalled. That's just about an example, it was corrected. But there are talks behind the scenes that there's a lot of games being played in these Harambees. 
you come, you say, nimepea na million tano. The five billion, and then when the guest leaves, eh, and na uh, acha one million, then they go back with the four million. Mm. So how you'll behave with that one million with your people after all, see then, mjovile mtajipanga. So do you think at this era, in summary brother, do you think in, at this era, do we still need our base or are they still viable? Uh, first, we have to go back to the Kibaki regime where uh, he, he actually made it illegal for the Arambe to continue, the Arambe spirit. And it is true that I agree that we do not really need this Arambe thing because it has been used as an avenue to sanitize money from corruption and money that is uh, meant for other projects and then directed to Arambe, Arambe exercises. And most of them, you realize, they actually meant to hoodwink and confuse citizens that uh, I am a very uh, magnanimous person that I know how to give, but in real sense, just made to confuse people. In most cases, the amount that is announced that I'm giving five million is not the amount that is given. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time that we are hearing about this. In Bomet, we had some, we had this border border youth who are complaining that. Uh, an Arambe was done, certain amount was collected, but that money has never gone to them. Mm -hmm. And they were asking, did the money go back with the DP or there is someone who's holding the money? Mm -hmm. And this thing is not only with the DP. We should realize it is with all politicians and every leader in our society. Mm -hmm. They come to actually get the, the applause and people clapping and now people treating, nearly treating how they've done a lot. But when you go on the ground, you don't see it. You know, let us be realistic. You know, Kenyans love to see people who are actually who actually seem to be giving, but look at this thing and analyze it. Mm -hmm. Who has this enough money that every weekend you are giving three million, five million, ten million? Come on. Even if you have a bank, that bank will collapse. Mm -hmm. So it is very easy to tell that these politicians are actually playing games with us. And it is time Kenyans realize that we can pull together as a people mm -hmm. without really requiring these people to come and confuse us. Mm -hmm. We can pull together as a people, we can do our developments. Let us just avoid these people come to steal the show because as a group we've done 10 thousand mm -hmm. they come and say we've given 20 in the real sense they've given two but they still the entire show it looks like that politician mm -hmm. is the one who funded that building but it is the <laughs> community you, who did. Mr. Sunset, yeah. now our parting shot will come in this way philip has cried here several times and including yourself and any other guest who comes here they talk of the problem is with the leadership and at the same time we kenyans are the accomplices of uh, all that happens getting the the bad leaders and the reason as to why you are here today is because we are looking just at a by-election uh, giving us the projection of the general election next year in summary do you think there is hope for kenyans now to redeem themselves through these uh, especially these and in 2022 I'm a two system meeting delay. Uh, if there is any hope, then the hope lies with you and me. Mm -hmm. But if the hope lies in someone else that we are seeing, mm -hmm. then we forget about the hope. Because I'll just give a brief summary. Mm -hmm. We've had leaders whom we've kept blaming, the people like Raila Odinga, people like the Kenyatta family, who have been in this game for quite some time. But look at the people that you want to replace them with. We are now coming to replace them with people are giving us wheelbarrows, people are giving us so funny stories and now we think we are going to redeem ourselves. How are you going to redeem ourselves when you are actually going from bad even to worse? Mm -hmm. Actually, if we need to redeem ourselves as citizens, let us not vote one, people who are famous. Two, let us not vote people based on how much they give me during elections. Then let us not vote people based on how nice they speak. Let us interrogate past this public opinion, go back to the leadership capabilities of someone. Mm -hmm. Then in so doing, we'll be able to get leaders. And, and let us also try to run and go ahead of money. Mm -hmm. If I'm given money, yes, I could be not having food for today. Let me take the money, but when it comes to voting, let me use my mind. Mm -hmm. That money should not confuse me at any given point. Mm -hmm. So for this country to proceed, and I can see hope, mm -hmm. but the hope I'm seeing is when you and me mm -hmm and now the people to advance that but not that other person when we really know this other person is just there to actually use us mm -hmm. to continue the mess mm -hmm. this country will only excel if 
the youth group, if all of us are united against these people we call leaders and now we come up with a new blood of leaders, people are determined to raise this country, people understand this country, people do not want to confuse us with speeches and all these PR uh, things, uh -huh. but people are ready to lead. And that is how Kenya will realize its dream. Thank you very much. Wakili Philip, kuna matumaini ama kimeumana? Just as your parting shot in summary. Matumaini ya. But I want to say that that, that hope uh, will be a little delayed. We had the opportunity during this pandemic to slow down uh, because we were running. We were running so fast but going nowhere. We had the opportunity to slow down and now start engaging in issues that really concern us, but we have squandered that opportunity. So yes, there is hope, but that hope uh, will not uh, deliver results in 2022. Unfortunately, uh, we will still be in the same place uh, in 2022, if not worse, but we still have an opportunity to re-engage. And one of the uh, final things I would say is this, that the citizen needs to be active all the time. Uh, we have best, uh, you know, uh, our, our uh, activity as citizens around elections, but we need to engage leadership and governance 24-7. Uh, we need to engage these uh, politicians and leaders that we ourselves have elected all the time. We should not just wait for, uh, you know, to uh, check them when, when now we are nearing an election, uh, an election year or an election period. If we do that, then... Is this famous quote yes. that Miyakatano Sinjingi Utarudi? Yeah, uh, Utarudi, yeah. If we <laughs> wait for five years, we, we won't make it. So we, we must be very active. Many thanks. These are gentlemen well endowed with information and how I wish that every time we take our our, our prime time to listen to what they contribute. That is Wakili Philip Mwangale and Frederick Sasha who have taken us through the third session of the special edition of the coverage of the Machako Senatorial by election. We've had discussions surrounding different matters that concern you here in Kenya and we've also traveled all the way to Machakos to engage the citizens and to know how the process of this by election is being conducted. We appreciate your comments and also your feedback on our social media handles and also on our SMS number. For me, Cornelius Omuse, we still have a long way to go today. It is a long day for us. We still have news, we still have power brief, and we still have such a discussion again. Keep it here on CAC TV.